Finally tonight, we're going to take you on a journey to a place so remote and mysterious that its very name is synonymous with ancient, faraway places. When you go from here to Timbuktu, you've gone to the middle of nowhere. But our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, made that journey recently and discovered that Timbuktu, in the country of Mali in Saharan Africa, is really someplace special. Our journey to Timbuktu would take us across the Sahara to nomad camps, to cities of mud, and to meet magicians who commune with the dead. Timbuktu is in Mali, one of West Africa's poorest yet most diverse nations, with wonders like the city of Djenne, where every building, including the great mosque, is made of mud. And villages on cliffs where the people still practice a form of voodoo. This is one of the only villages that allows outsiders to witness the sacred dances. The dance is designed to escort the souls of the fallen to the great beyond, a roadmap to show the dead where to go. Finally, we make it to Timbuktu's tiny airport and meet our guide, a Tuareg named Halis. Halis, nice yes. to see you, Richard. He whisks us to his camp on the outskirts of Timbuktu and welcomes us with a dance. The Tuareg are the world's only culture where the men veil, but women do not. Tuareg women have more rights than men. They are the heads of the household. Women decide when the camp should move. The Tuareg founded Timbuktu a thousand years ago on the edge of the Sahara. Tuareg camel caravans once dominated all the trade of gold, salt and slaves through the desert. It made Timbuktu rich beyond measure, but so isolated, outsiders didn't know where it was. Timbuktu's fame can be traced back to a single man. In 1326, Timbuktu's most famous king, Mansa Musa, wanted to impress the world. He traveled by caravan through the desert across Egypt, laden with gold. When he arrived, word of his incredible wealth quickly spread. And Europeans wanted to know, where was Timbuktu, this mysterious city of gold? It would take them another 500 years to find it. The next morning, we arrive in the center of Timbuktu. The city faded long ago. All that's left of the once fabled trade routes are a few cellars of salt. But now there is an effort underway to preserve Timbuktu's heritage. At its peak, Timbuktu had the greatest libraries in Africa. Foreign donors are now paying to restore its 100,000 surviving manuscripts on religion, mathematics, and law. As Timbuktu, lost and then rediscovered, is slowly being reborn. Richard Engel, NBC News, Timbuktu.